So the next step that I'm going to take a look at is now that we've kind of worked out our initial earthworks volumes, we want to start taking a look at getting a mass grading uh, in the design, taking a look at how we get this large normalized man-made surface related to existing ground. And that's where I'll take advantage of using my design pad tool. So this tool allows me to pick a closed polygon that represents my internal mass grading area and then a surface that I'm planning on grading to. So I can tell or I know from experience that the surface that kind of uh, has an edge here that is less linear, uh, that's curving because of the point set, is my existing ground, not my subgrade survey data. So I can pick the surface here. If I had mispicked, you could redefine the surface quickly by either reselecting or selecting from a list of surfaces that are in the drawing file. And so what do we get here when we start? We can see in 3D over in this window that we have now some information that's come up and related itself to existing ground. Uh, and we have the contour lines for this surface, this design pad surface that contains the definition of the design pad, how it relates to existing ground, and what's going on for the exterior grading and the interior grading, as well as some <clears throat> cut and fill volumes for this design pad to the surface we relate it to. So right now we can see the cut is, is limited, but the fill is heavy on how it has initialized the design pad. So the default state for the definition is to do what we call PIs from surface. This takes the, the VPIs or the normal vertices of the CAD geometry and projects them up to surface elevation. So they're all at existing ground, but it's not a planar surface. We can already see by the contours that there's some twisting occurring because of those corners being at differing elevations. This may be satisfactory, although typically we're looking to find a balance for the design where our cut and fill volumes are as equal to each other as possible so we don't have the added costs of bringing material onto the site or paying to have material removed from the site unnecessarily. So I'll change from PIs from surface, the default definition, to go to a true planar definition. So this starts out now with the slope being zero, completely flat, where the elevation for this design pad now is determined by the centroid of the area being set to the average height of the triangles found within the bounded shape. So whatever the existing wing in that area, the average height of the highest and lowest points is where the default is starting to set the elevation for this design pad. Now, we may want to see some overall slope on this planar surface to help water drainage or to allow it to better fit to the existing ground with the least amount of impact on cut and fill. So I can use the average capability here, which will analyze the shape and try to fit it to the ground as best as possible. So this results now in cut and fill volumes that are off by a magnitude of 10,000 cubic meters. We definitely can do better than that. Uh, but it resets the elevation from what was at about 90 meters down to 89.22. It sets a 2% slope from the back of the site to the front, a minus 2, so grading down naturally in this direction, and then sets a direction that best fits to the ground. I can change that direction dynamically here, and I can recalculate, and I can see how my volumes do by testing a 2% slope and a number of different angles. This one doesn't look too bad, but the example that will work going sheet draining from back to front to be a little bit more normalized. So I'm going to tweak my values here a little bit to get some uh, better results. So we're going to use a, an elevation of 89.5 meters. We're going to set our slope to be minus 2, and I'm going to set my direction to be either minus 90 or 270. So we're going to sheet drain from back to front. I'm also going to make an adjustment to my exterior grading. Now this can be defined either as H over V or as a percentage. Uh, I'll keep percentage in here for now to be consistent. We'll do a 33.33% grade or 3 to 1 again as well too, so that I can see if I'm keeping my um, grading close to or within the property line for the site. Got a little bit here that goes over and here that goes over, but we're going to be further adjusting. So now if I calculate my cut and fill volumes, 
I can see that I have a solution where I have just a little bit more fill than I have in cut. So I may be reasonable on my first basis here, uh, and I'd like to be able to get this volume out from the dialog and be able to hold on to it as we move forward.